On May 1st, 1995, a man named Brian Hance, a student at the University of Arizona, noticed a strange publication printed in his school newspaper, The Daily Wildcat. At first, it intrigued him, but he didn't really think much of it. A year later, he noticed another weird publication. It was again posted in a school newspaper, and again on May 1st. Finally, on May 1st, 1997, Brian noticed a third publication. All three of them had a particularly common feature, the phrase, May Day. Since then, on almost every May 1st for over 30 years now, someone has been printing a new cryptic May Day ad onto the Daily Wildcat, and no one knows why. This collection of mysterious puzzles has become known as the May Day Mystery. May 1st is a celebrated holiday in many cultures. Commonly referred to as May Day, it is an ancient Northern Hemisphere spring festival, as well as the International Workers' Day for certain socialist and communist parties. On this day, this American holiday, we are celebrating the rights of free laboring men and women. American labor now bears a tremendous responsibility in the winning of this most brutal, most terrible of all wars. It is also the day that an unknown source has chosen to publish mystifying advertisements in the Daily Wildcat. After encountering these announcements, Brian set out to learn more about this mysterious riddle. This led him to create the website MaydayMystery.org, as well as research through the Daily Wildcat's archives to find any more Mayday puzzles. And to his surprise, the archives went as far back as 1981, and almost every one of them had a Mayday publication. Over the last 38 years, these advertisements have been appearing consistently, and they contain some of the most cryptographic multilingual content since those encountered by Robert Langdon in the Da Vinci Code. Considering how expensive it is to run a full-page ad, it's safe to assume that these messages are not merely posted for amusement. Some sources claim that the puzzles merely serve as a celebratory arrangement of the anniversary of Confessio Augustana or the Augsburg Confession of the Lutheran Church. Others claim that this is actually the work of a secret society, detailing instructions on how to gain access to meetings and topics for discussion. Only one thing is for sure. The true motive behind these puzzles remains unknown. By now, the MaydayMystery.org website contains every Mayday puzzle since 1981 that Brian could find. Keep in mind that the Daily Wildcat has been around since 1899, but the archives themselves only go as far back as 1981, so it's possible that there are many more Mayday ads out there. Each of the puzzles are intricately designed, with many of the later publications containing a dense array of mathematical equations, map coordinates, geometrical patterns, biblical references, symbology, and text in multiple languages. The Mayday puzzles contain a depth of detail that no average person could decipher on their own. The puzzles, however, do contain recurring elements, such as historical figures, the letters SR slash CL, the word Liet Motive, and this image of a smiling face, simply known as Smiley Guy. A simple caricature, Smiley Guy is present in virtually every Mayday Mystery announcement since his first known appearance in 1982. Given the fact that the amount of hairs on his head have varied across puzzles, some researchers have claimed that this Smiling Guy is somehow a key to deciphering the underlying codes. Besides Smiley Guy, four historical figures are constantly mentioned in the puzzles. Oliver Cromwell, Gustavus Adolphus, John Calvin, and Martin Luther. These reoccurring elements have sparked much debate as to the motive behind the Mayday puzzles, which seems to be of a religious nature. Much is still unknown. One thing that we do know is that there is an organization behind these puzzles, and they don't consider this a game. 
but more on that later. To get a clearer picture as to the nature of these publications, let's look at the oldest article in their database, which is considered to be the first Mayday Mystery Puzzle. We see here a vague introduction, SRCL, followed by the name Richmond, five Chinese characters, and the words May Day, 1981. Considering this comes from a time when most households didn't have a computer and smartphones didn't even exist, it's safe to say that this message is meant for a select group of individuals. Let's start with the obvious, the Chinese text. Users at MaydayMystery.org have translated this as Chairman Mao, 10,000 or a great number, and year or years old. In Chinese culture, 10,000 years is considered a reference to infinity or a really long time. Putting the pieces together, the first puzzle could be interpreted as long live Chairman Mao. Okay, but who is Chairman Mao? Chairman Mao was the leader of the Communist Party of China from 1943 until his death in 1976. He was a Chinese Communist Revolutionary, and also the founding father of the People's Republic of China, which was established in 1949. Considering the puzzles are posted on International Workers' Day, this connection to Chairman Mao is almost suggestive of a celebration of communism. Even more suggestive is this stamp, released on May 1st in the year 1967. This stamp has the same phrase as the Mayday puzzle, Long Live Chairman Mao. However, the Mayday Mystery Puzzle can only be traced back to 1981, 14 years after the release of the stamp, and 5 years after the death of Chairman Mao. Independent researchers were able to uncover this email that includes a man known as Stanley Richmond. The email mentions a philatelic show in the year 1998, the term philatelic referring to the collection, appreciation, and research activities on stamps and other philatelic products. We can see that the show will be held on May 1st, and doing a quick Google search reveals that in the mid-1960s, a man named Stanley Richmond purchased the Daniel F. Kelleher Company, the oldest philatelic auction house in America. Looking through all of these details, there almost seems to be a definitive connection between the first Mayday Mystery Puzzle, the Chairman Mao stamp from 1967, and Stanley Richmond, who acquired the Daniel F. Keller Company in the mid-1960s. Is it possible that the letters SR on the first line of the puzzle refer to Stanley Richmond himself? If this were the only puzzle in circulation, then perhaps we could follow this lead. However, the SRCL is a reoccurring theme throughout all the Mayday publications, even those without a potential connection to the stamp. It's also important to note that taking a historical approach is not the only way this puzzle could be interpreted. Other researchers at MaydayMystery.org have taken a different direction in their analysis, including the usage of Gematria, an alphanumeric code of assigning numerical values to names, words, or phrases based on the letters. As a matter of fact, one poster at MaydayMystery.org, who goes by the alias Near a Terminal, seems to affirm this. One of the few things I know about Chinese is that you count the number of brush strokes in a character, the user writes. There are 8 letters in the word Richmond, and there are 24 brush strokes in the Chinese characters underneath. And almost as confirmation, the next Mayday announcement was posted later that same year on exactly August 24th. With the August announcement, it's revealed that the mysterious publications are not necessarily exclusive to the month of May. In years where May 1st lies on a weekend, we can see the publications in April, due to the fact that the Arizona Daily Wildcat does not print on weekends. It's as if the main puzzles are posted in May, with additional announcements being posted at key times of the year in the form of quarterly updates or year-end reports, as suggested by user philo underscore t in the Fortiana forums. Given what we have seen, it's safe to assume that there is more to these publications than meets the eye. Years have passed, and the mystery remains unsolved. Yet, each year, the puzzles continue to emerge, much more complex than the first. The sheer amount of information involved confirms that 
There is indeed an organization behind these puzzles. They make this clear in later messages by referring to themselves simply as the Orphanage, with the first mention dating back to February 8th, 1989. Given the multicultural content and many of their announcements, we can speculate that the name, the Orphanage, reflects a group of people who have orphaned themselves from their native culture. But what is their purpose in doing so? Is it purely for religious reasons? And what is their purpose in creating these strange publications? Since the establishment of MaydayMystery.org, a lot of research has gone into figuring out the nature of this mystery. In Brian Hans's own investigations, he was able to trace the publications back to a lawyer who claims to be a legal counsel for the organization, a lawyer by the name of Mr. Robert Truman Hungerford. Brian discovered that Mr. Hungerford is an intermediary for the organization and had been the one publishing the puzzles for at least the last decade. When confronted, Mr. Hungerford refused to discuss their origins, claiming only that, quote, it is in all likelihood that I am a disturbed, mentally ill person, and these writings are no doubt the ravings of a madman. With all the poking and prodding that Brian was undergoing, you might think that he might be a target or something, someone needing to be silenced, but it's quite the contrary. In 1999, the orphanage actually reached out to Brian themselves through an email shown here. In the email, the orphanage makes it clear that these announcements are not a game. They assert that there is indeed a cause to these mysterious publications, and that the cause is not necessarily exclusive to Tucson, home to the University of Arizona. They even go so far as to provide hints, claiming that Brian, quote, needs to work from the edges of the diagrams in toward the center, and that he needs help with his Latin, Greek, and Hebrew. To date, the puzzles have included about 14 languages together with the aforementioned three, with others ranging from varying forms of Chinese to Afrikaans. Throughout the years, it's said that Brian has received more than a hundred emails, courier messages, and packages from around the world. There are claims that he has even received money, presumably to help keep the servers running. Your numerous efforts have been generally beneficial to both our strategic and tactical goals, and you deserve to be fully rewarded. Brian even admitted that sometimes he wished they'd never contacted him at all, as his involvement has gone, quote, from simple to far too complex. Other theories have arisen over the years. From a thread in the paranormal forums on 4chan, some users have suggested a link between the mystery puzzles and the McCain Institution's Sedona Forum an annual high-level private gathering of international leaders held at Sedona, Arizona. Some of the high-profile names with connections to the Sedona Forum include members of the Rothschild family, Hillary Clinton, and Tony Blair. Even more unsettling are the claims that the media mystery is linked to the Baal worship and child sacrifices. According to Breaking Israel News, April 19th is a meaningful day to occultists and worshippers of Baal as it marks the first day of summer in ancient times. It is considered the start of a 13-day period known as the Blood Sacrifice to the Beast, culminating on May Day. Unfortunately, I just don't have much of an answer from this point. This just might be a game of intrigue, perhaps even a challenge for the intellectual mind. Maybe it is a greater or revolutionary movement, given the social, political, and religious themes. Maybe it's just a wealthy lawyer shitposting on his old university's newspaper. It may be something, it might have all been nothing. With so many references and the depth of detail involved, none of these puzzles have ever really been fully solved. And who knows? It's likely that most never will. I guess only time will tell. <laughs>